If I were to ask you what are some of the fastest muscles in the human body, you might think of muscle groups like the quads, the hamstrings, or maybe even the calf muscles. Muscles that get involved in things like sprinting or jumping. If I were to ask you what are some of the most coordinated muscles in the human body, you might think of muscles that move the hands and the fingers. But none of those muscle groups that I just mentioned encompass both of those characteristics. That title belongs to a group of muscles called the extraocular muscles, or the muscles that move the eye. So in today's video, we're going to show you this awesome dissection that we made through the skull so that you can take a look at these amazing eye muscles and we can figure out why they're some of the most fast and coordinated muscles in the human body. Anatomical awesomeness is awaiting us. So let's do this. So let's take a look at a real human eye in these extraocular muscles. Now we're going to zoom in a bit here. So let me actually orient you to what we're looking at by using this skull. We're gonna have to remove, or we did remove, this portion of the skull right here so we could see more clearly into the orbit, which is just the eye socket. We're also gonna show you a view where we remove this plate of bone here so you can see a superior view or the upper portion of the eye. But let's start with that lateral view and you can see how amazing this eye is. If I put a little pressure on it, you can see the cornea bulge out. And the cornea is just that clear portion of the eye that you'll see on someone when you look at them from the side. And then obviously you can see the white part of the eye here. Now the white part of the eye is called the sclera. And the sclera is important because it's made of a tough connective tissue and this is where the extraocular muscles will attach so they can pull and tug on the eye and move it in different directions. Now extraocular just means outside the eye. Extra means outside, ocular referring to the eye. And you can see the first extraocular muscle right here. Look how awesome this muscle is and you can definitely see it attaching to the sclera or the white portion of the eye. Now this muscle is actually called the lateral rectus and there are six total extraocular muscles and they're actually pretty easy to learn to memorize because four of the muscles have the word rectus in the name. We've seen the first one called the lateral rectus and rectus just means straight because the muscle fibers are going in this straight fiber orientation as you can see from this muscle. But here's the lateral rectus, we also will have an inferior rectus on the under portion or inferior aspect of the eye, a superior rectus above the eye, and I can even show you that from the top view. If we show you from the top view, I actually do have to mention another muscle that's on top of the superior rectus. This muscle here is called the levator palpebri superioris. It's a mouthful, but the name actually may make sense. Levator means it lifts or elevates, palpebri refers to the eyelid. So in other words, it opens your eye. If I move that out of the way, we can get to the superior rectus here. And on the medial aspect of the eye, look how cool this one is. This is the medial rectus. But you can see with the four rectus muscles how they attach to different portions of the eye. So they could move it in different directions. It could go upward or elevation, downward, which would be depression, it could move the eye outward, which would be abduction, or even move the eye inward, which would be adduction. And what about the last two extraocular muscles? These two are my favorites because they have a cool, unique function that I'm going to mention in just a second, but they also are pretty easy to remember because they have the word oblique as part of their name, and oblique just because they attach to the eye at a slant or at an angle. The first one is called the superior oblique, and you can see this cool muscle coming in and attaching at a slant or an angle to the top portion of the eye or the superior aspect of the eye, and then we can see the inferior oblique here, again coming in at a slant or an angle to attach to the inferior aspect or that underside of the eye. Now because of the angle at which they attach to the eye, this gives them the ability to pull the eye in a direction that you might think like towards the corners, like outward and upward or downward and inward. But the reality is to get to all the corners or those specific directions of gaze, you're gonna need a combination of those obliques and as well as some of the rectus muscles. But that unique function that I mentioned or at least alluded to with these oblique muscles, these muscles can do something super cool. They can actually rotate the eye inward or internally and rotate the eye externally, almost like just twisting the eyeball, which can be pretty helpful for your vision when you say like, tilt your head from side to side. Now for those of you who love every little anatomical detail, I'm gonna put the specific functions of those muscles in the description below, but let's talk about how and why these muscles are some of the most coordinated muscles in the human body. And let's say you're reading something on a page or on a screen, and I want you to think about how subtle of a movement these muscles have to create for the eye 
so that your eye can scan letter by letter by letter as you're reading across that page or that screen. That requires an incredible amount of coordination and fine motor control. And if we didn't have this level of fine motor control with our eye muscles, your eye movements would be jerky and you'd likely miss things as you were reading across the screen or just you'd miss things as you, as you were scanning through looking at something just in daily life. So this gives us the why we need this level of coordination but how does our body accomplish this level of coordination with these muscles? The extraocular muscles are made up of the smallest motor units found throughout the body. But what does this mean? Well, if you've watched some of our previous videos, you may have heard me mention motor units and motor unit recruitment before. But if you haven't heard of this, a motor unit is the motor neuron and the muscle fibers it controls. And an important concept to understand how motor units function is that when that motor neuron sends the signal, all of the muscle fibers that it controls will contract with full force. So that means you don't want to have one motor unit and therefore one motor neuron controlling every single muscle fiber within a whole muscle. That would be bad. So for example, if the lateral rectus, extraocular muscle, only had one motor unit and therefore one motor neuron controlling every single muscle fiber within the muscle, that means every time it sent the signal, every single muscle fiber contracts and that muscle would just whip the eye out to the outside and we wouldn't have any of that fine motor control. But instead, we break up the muscles into multiple motor units and these extraocular muscles have very small motor units. We're talking one motor neuron controlling three to 10 muscle fibers. Compare that to the biceps. The biceps has motor units the size of one motor neuron controlling over a thousand muscle fibers. So you could see if I can engage only three to 10 muscle fibers, within these extraocular muscles, I can get that fine motor control and get those subtle movements with eye position. But what if I did want to whip or move my eye quickly in a certain direction? I think we could all agree that there are plenty of situations where this is necessary or beneficial to move our eye quickly so that we could maybe view something coming our way that may be dangerous and we could react to it. And one of the ways that we can move these muscles or engage these muscles so the eye moves quickly is just simply recruit more motor units. So instead of engaging maybe just those three to 10 muscle fibers that we would do in those subtle fine movements, we could recruit more motor units and nearly engage almost all of the muscle fibers and move that eye as quickly as possible. Now that is not unique just to these extraocular muscles. We could do that in any of our skeletal muscles. Like with the biceps, I'm gonna recruit less motor units doing something like this versus engaging a lot more doing something like this. So there's something else or some other things we need to consider when it comes to understanding why these extraocular muscles are some of the fastest in the human body. One of the things that contributes to the speed of these muscles and how fast they can move the eye is that they are built up with a great amount of fast twitch muscle fibers. Now you may have heard of fast twitch fibers versus slow twitch fibers, and as the names imply, the fast twitch fibers contract with greater velocity, but they fatigue rather quickly. Whereas the slow twitch fibers contract with less velocity, but they are fatigue resistant. So you might think, well, these extraocular muscles must be mostly made up of the fast twitch fibers. And yes, they have a great amount of them, and that does contribute to their speed, but we still need to have adequate amounts of slow twitch fibers mixed into these muscles because think of it from this perspective. We need to have some level of fatigue resistance built into these muscles because we need to be able to hold our gaze for an extended period of time without these muscles crapping out or fatiguing on us. And if you think about it from the idea of that we're constantly contracting these muscles and moving our eye throughout the day, again, a need for fatigue resistance. So again, yes, the fast twitch fibers are important for the speed of these muscles, but there's still also one other thing we need to consider that contributes to the speed of these extraocular muscles. The extraocular muscles are overbuilt. And you might be thinking, how are they overbuilt? These are pretty small muscles. Well, what I mean by overbuilt is that these muscles have a nice ratio of their size compared to how much weight they have to move. The eyeball doesn't weigh very much, and you could definitely get away with having smaller extraocular muscles and still maintain that fine motor control and be able to make those subtle adjustments in eye position because remember, we didn't need to recruit that many muscle fibers and motor units to do those subtle adjustments. But if the muscle is smaller overall, it wouldn't be able to generate as much force and wouldn't be able to move the eye as quickly. But instead, we have these nice overbuilt muscles with this nice ratio of their size compared to the weight they have to move so that you can move the eyeball really quickly when you say you have to look over here or over here. And as always, thanks for watching everyone. We really appreciate everyone's support. And we also wanna take a second to say thank you to all those who donate their bodies to science and education. We could not teach anatomy in the same way without these precious anatomical gifts. 
Also, please comment below, let us know what you thought of the video and any future video ideas that you may have. And if you feel the need, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.